Look out, Megan. There's a new young creepy girl on the block ready to kill anyone that crosses her. And her name is Abigail. Not to be confused with Annabelle. It's a creepy young doll. Let's talk about this film and if it's worth your time. Abigail is an R-rated film about a vampiric ballerina. So it's safe to say it's not taking itself too seriously. And that's something we have in common. Here on this channel, Adam does movies, which I would appreciate if you subscribed to and liked right now. I don't take myself too seriously. I find movies to be entertainment, to be fun. They can be art from time to time, which is nice. Most of the time it's not anymore. But I like to chat about it. And if you like listening to someone ramble nonsensically for a while, I'd love to have you stick around. You've come to the right place. I enjoyed Megan. I thought that was a fun flick. So I was actually excited for Abigail. It looked like it took everything that worked with that movie and upped the ante in terms to the violence, the gore, since this is very much an R-rated flick. But I do think it goes on a bit long and kind of loses itself in the final act. This movie's about an hour and 50 with the credits included. If, if it just would have shaved off about 10 or so minutes, we could have a really smooth sailing experience. As it stands though, Abigail was a fun time at the movies. I did enjoy this one quite a bit. It's gonna come with a few caveats. For starters, some of the decisions this crew makes are downright puzzling. I'm not gonna get into spoiler territory, but I did find myself getting a bit frustrated by the fact that these guys were scooby-dooing around this mansion by themselves. But let's very surface level loosely talk about this plot. It revolves around this young girl, Abigail, who's played by Alicia Weir, and she is doing a fantastic job here. This is a great performance by this young actress really sold me as this evil little nightmare fuel running around in ballerina slippers. She's held captive up in a mansion by a bunch of bozos who are looking for some ransom money. These guys are supposed to be good at what they do, kind of the best of the best in a matter of speaking. You have the wheel man, you got the muscle, you got the hacker. I'm not buying it from most of these guys. In fact, they're downright incompetent a lot of the time. And again, I think that's the problem with the script at points is trying to play them off for laughs. But then it doesn't retain the fact that they're supposed to be knowledgeable and skilled at what they do. That said, I'm not looking for high art with this movie. It is very entertaining. There's some great lines of dialogue. There are some funny situations these characters get themselves into. And again, Abigail is fantastic in this film. She's tap dancing around. She's flipping over people, biting into them. There's a lot of gore. It looks gross. It looks real. I will say the ballerina aspect of it does kind of feel like a gimmick. Very gimmicky. In fact, it doesn't play into the story at all. It's just she happens to like dancing and we're just going to go with that. We have a ragtag group of people here, different walks of life coming together. They all fit the roles very well. I think Catherine Newton is the standout for me because I wasn't that impressed with her in a few of the things I saw. Although she won me over with Lisa Frankenstein, she did a good job in that movie. And here I think she's at her best, really playing up this character, having a good time with it. It's a, it's a far cry from the Ant-Man and the Wasp quantum shittia. I went with my buddy DJ Bless, AKA Sutter Kane, and the thing that kind of bothered him was the music in this. He does mixes and composition for Hollywood films and of course for his own personal projects, so that stuff really sticks out to him. And he was pointing out some of the bizarre choices with the music in this and how things didn't really line up often, and I do happen to agree. Some of the, some of the music was a bit odd. <laughs> it, it's kind of 50-50. When it was more of the compositional stuff, the composing, that was all good. That was fine. But they would randomly throw out a rap song or whatever, and it just felt forced. It didn't seem natural to the storyline. I think this movie's at its absolute best when it is having a great time with what's going on. Abigail's terrorizing these people. She's flipping around and doing great stuff. And it's at its worst when it gets bogged down with some of the character development shit that's just really not that necessary for this type of movie. Of course, it's good to have characters you can root for and that you like, but it goes a bit far with it and there's no real payoff at the end. And all I'm thinking is Melissa Barrera is looking really great in that tank top. I have no idea what she's talking about or why she's still going on about her kid. Can I focus on Abigail and how she's going to get out of this situation? That would be, that would be great. 
There are a few moments where the monologues drag on way too long and I just want to get back into the action. Overall though, Abigail's an easy, fun watch. Definitely worth checking out if you like the subgenre. If you're into horror vampire films, this one's going to give you exactly what you want. Plus it has some of those plays on the tropes that I appreciated. And it has potential to go even further down the road. I would say it was a fun time at the theaters, but <laughs> that would be a lie because we live in 2024 where everything's basically one step away from a fucking hellscape. During this movie, I went with my buddy. We were having a pleasant experience for about, I'd say 40% of the film. At which point, a whole group of teenagers decided, you know what, let's check out Abigail. Who cares if it's been on for a long time? We're going to go watch it now. So they came stomping in, phones out like they're at a rave. They loudly crash into their chairs in the back. I think they brought in a KFC family feast at one point because I'm hearing lots of rappers and sound effects. One of these idiots drops what sounds like a canteen from 1945. It smashes to the ground. King, 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 king. And he did that like four times. Put it away. And these children could not sit still. Every five minutes, they're up and down the aisles, going in pairs. Couples leaving for five to ten minutes, maybe doing an HJ in the bathroom, coming back for seconds later. I don't know what's going on. My buddy Bless looks at me eventually and goes, Why do people go to the movies anymore? And that really could be asked for both sets of people. Us, who are fans of film and are just trying to escape reality and watch a movie for a couple hours and the people that are being obnoxious and not really watching the movie at all. Just go to a parent's house, go to the basement, do something else that's not so obnoxious to everyone around you. Anyway, Abigail was a good time, the theater experience was not, so if you can see this movie, definitely go to matinee, definitely try to avoid anyone at this point. I don't know, I don't even know what to say. It's always terrible. I typically don't even bring it up anymore because I'm so desensitized by how awful people are, but I got horror stories. I got all sorts of horror stories, but we're gonna leave it there with this Abigail film. Check it out, maybe you already did, let me know. Leave a comment, did you like this one? Did you even know it exists? A lot of people I've talked to didn't even know what it was when I said it, so, you know, marketing's great. Oh, and if you liked my ranty spiel a second ago, I have a whole channel dedicated to just that. It's called Adam Does Rants. It's a new channel. I have seven or eight videos up there. I'm popping new ones out every week. Would love to have you subscribe there as well. All right, take care.